Hi guys, this is Tensor. Welcome to the Golang Tutorial Part 5. Today we are going to actually put a database inside of our web app. Up until now we've been using text files to save all of the data that we've been using inside of our web app. And now we are going to add a database to allow us to actually query and grab these things and then put them back in. So for this we're going to use uh, a database called SQLite. For those of you who don't know what it is, it's basically an embedded version of SQL. So there are many flavors of SQL, which is a relational database. SQLite is, I'd say, the smallest one and probably the simplest one. And if you are an independent developer and you're developing, say, an offline tool or even a small online application, most likely you'll use something like SQLite because it's just so easy. If you are developing something bigger, maybe you'll use something like Postgres or you'll use MySQL. If enough of you really want to see, say, MongoDB, just comment on this video and let me know. So here's our program for now. As you can see, it's this is the edit part of it. We can go to the test part of it and we can edit all of this. So say we wanted to add some other stuff into it. If we hit just save, as you can see, it's been added. And we can just go back and forth this way. We've added this little navigation. Okay guys, so the first thing we need to do is actually import two imports. The first one is going to be called database backslash SQL and this is actually a part of the Golang language. The other one is going to be our actual SQL driver which is just github.com madsen go SQL light 3. And for this one, because we're not going to actually use it for anything, we're just going to use an underscore. So now we need to actually open our database. To do this, we need to create a database variable. So we're going to create a variable called database. And we're passing an underscore as well because this function gives us two uh, things back. One of them is an error. Uh, since we don't want to do any error checking on it, we're just going to pass the underscore to it. So we're going to open our database, and inside of this we need to pass in our uh, driver, which is here. It's called SQLite 3, and we need to pass in the database name. So we want to actually put it inside of this cache folder that I've created here. So we're going to say cache backslash, and we're going to call it web.db. So that's our database name, and it's going to be inside this cache folder here. Actually, also, we want to be able to read our files from this cache folder as well. So we're going to quickly change things to do that as well. And there we go. So now both of these should read from the cache folder, which will make things a little bit, a little bit better because we'll be able to actually look just in the cache folder and it'll have all of our backup files. So we also need to define one more variable and this variable is going to be our string or a string of SQL to create the actual database. So it's going to be called create DB. And inside of it we're going to say create table if not exists pages. So we're creating a table called pages if it doesn't already exist inside of our SQL uh, database. And this is going to have a title of type text. It's going to have a body of type blob. And it's going to have a timestamp of type text. So we're using the blob type because that corresponds with the uh, slice of bytes type from Go inside of SQL. And we're adding this timestamp part. Well, you'll actually see why later when we actually start showing it off. So now we need to actually change our save function here. And actually, I'm going to call this function save cache now. So let's change everything else. So we've changed this to save cache just to make it a little simpler to understand. The first thing we need to do is actually define our timestamp in here. So basically what this is doing is it's bringing the actual time into our um, variable here. Then we're formatting that into a string, which we're then assigning to our timestamp. So now after we actually create our file here, we're going to type db exec, and then we're going to cast that create db variable into it. And so what this will do is it will actually open up the database run this piece of SQL and then finish. 
So actually commit it to the SQL uh, database. So now we're going to actually do our logic to actually save our variables inside the database. So we're going to assign a variable TX to db.begin. And TX basically just stands for transaction. And then we're going to pass it, or we're going to assign a variable STMT to TX.prepare. And inside of here, we're going to say insert into pages title body timestamp values question mark question mark question mark basically this is just getting the the actual table ready to receive the values that we're about to send so these values we're going to send through stmt.exec and we're going to send the p title p.body and timestamp. Oh, and by the way, when we created our timestamp variable here, it actually imported string dot convert or string converse and time um, to actually allow it to work. So if you guys aren't using uh, IntelliJ like I am, maybe you want to actually bring these in manually. As always, of course, our code will be on GitHub. So if you want to take a look at it later, you can definitely do that. Now we need to do uh, tx.commit so we need to actually commit these changes to our database and that's what we're doing here now we're going to actually take this off of the return value and we're going to return our error and um, the reason why we're doing this is well you'll see later okay so this function now actually creates both a file in the cache and it creates a uh, or it puts our values inside of our database. So we can actually run this now and we could actually see what kind of database it's creating. So so here, if I've loaded it, now it's actually reading from the cache folder here. If we hit save, it will actually save it into the database. So let's do the same for our edit file. And now we're going to bring up what's called the SQLite 3 browser. Let's open our database inside of here. Okay, so now I've opened up the database here, and as you can see, we have a table inside of it, and our table has a title, body, and timestamp, and inside of the data we have one edit, and it has all of that gobbledygook text inside of it, and a timestamp assigned to it, and our test also has all that gobbledygook assigned to it, and a timestamp. So this is nice, but you'll see right now, this is one of the flaws of using SQL, if I hit save again, and I reload the data in here, now we have two edits. And this is actually why we're using the timestamp. So when we query the database, we want to sort everything by the timestamp so that we get the latest iteration of the page. That way, if we actually load it, we'll get the latest version. But we'll also have a record of all the versions before it, so that if something does go wrong, we can go into our database and pull them out. So let's actually see what the SQL will look like for this. So for example, say we wanted to select the edit page, and we want to sort it by our timestamp. Let's do that real quick. So we're going to say select title and body from pages where title equals, and we'll say edit, order by timestamp. And if we run this, you'll see that it actually brings both of the, uh, the rows out for us. So we need to add one more little thing, and that's DSCE limit one. And basically what this is saying is that we only want one row. And so now we have the latest iteration of edit. So we need to implement this into our load functions when we're going to actually load this from our SQL. So let's actually build those load functions now. We're going to leave this load function alone for now. We're going to build another function. It's going to be called load source. This function is going to get a title string and it's going to pass back a page pointer and an error in a tuple. I know it's similar to our load function and that's on purpose. So we're going to create a variable called name, and this is going to be of string type, and then we're going to create a variable called body, and this is going to be a byte type, or a slice of bytes, rather. Then we're going to say q underscore equals db.query, and we're going to input the 
SQL that we just used, which is select title and body from pages where title equals, and we're going to, rather than pass in edit as hard code, we're going to pass in title as a concatenated string here. So this seems like it might work, but it won't actually work. And the reasoning is because title needs to be surrounded. The actual variable itself inside of the SQL needs to be surrounded by quotes. So we need to put single quotes on the outside of these double quotes. So when it gets passed in there, say it's test, it will be passed in as a string of test. So these quotes will be around the test variable. So now we're going to say for q.next, q.scan, and we're going to scan for the name and the body variable. What this is basically doing, if any of you have ever used the uh, console scan, uh, fmt.scan function in Go, it's very similar. Uh, we pass in the variables that we want to scan from the SQL query. So in this case, we're going to assign title to name and body to body. We're going to return page with title equaling name and body equaling body. Now we want to do one more thing just uh, to actually deal with the error handling here. And that's replace this underscore with ERR. And then we want to check for an error. So if ERR does not equal nil, return nil comma ERR. So now our function will actually return an error if an error happens when we query the database. This is very important. We're going to actually use it in our view and in our edit function. So let's actually implement this into our view and edit functions so that we can actually load from the database. So in our view handler, we're going to actually say, okay, P comma error equals load source and we're going to pass in title like we do with our load function here. And then we're going to comment out load here. Now I'm deliberately making an error here. And we will actually see what that error is. We're going to do the same thing here for the edit function. So load, load source title and let's comment this out. So in theory we should get our page type here. And it should pass into our execute template. And we can actually remove these errors here for now. Just make them underscores because we don't really need them. And let's see if this works. So let's actually run it. This is actually going to work because, and I'll tell you why. And the reason why it's working is because we already have edit and test inside of the database. But if we actually delete the database, so let's go in here and delete the database. So now we've deleted the database. If we actually run it now, and we try to query the database, we're actually going to get an error because there is no data inside of the database. So as you can see here, it shows us just a blank page, even though our text files should pop up with, you know, actual text in it. So this is a problem and this is, you know, why we actually want to throw the error. So we're going to actually handle the error here and we're going to say, if error is not equal to nil, and we're actually going to throw in our load function in here. So if we get an error from our load source function, we're going to load from the text file. We're going to do the same thing for our edit handler. And remember, we're not reassigning P, or we're not assigning P, rather, we're reassigning P. So that's why I am removing the colon here. So this should work, but we will again run into a slight error. I'm doing this on purpose just so that you guys can understand how the database is actually working. So let's actually run it again. So here's our test page, and this is being loaded from our text file. All right, none of this is in the database yet. In fact, the database should be empty. But if we edit it and we hit save, it should save it into our database. But here's the problem. Now if we go to our edit, page, it will actually be empty. There won't even be a title. And the reason why this is happening is because when our view function fires, even with edit in it, it's trying to query um, the body or it's trying to query our page table. And this is not actually throwing back an error. It's just saying, okay, well, it's empty. There's no data in there. And that's why we're getting nothing. So it's not actually loading from the page either. It's just loading from the source and there's nothing inside that source and therefore it's not working. So to fix this, we throw in one more little if statement. So we say if p.title 
equals an empty string. We're going to just say p if title equals load. And the reason why we're doing this is we want to just say, okay, if this page is empty, we want to use our load function instead. So we want to use our text files. So now everything should work as we, you know, had it before, except now we have a database to back everything up. So as you can see, our edit function loads, even though we're not actually loading it from the database. And if we go to test, it also is in the database. So if we bring up our SQL Lite um, reader. Okay, so now I've opened web, and as you can see, we have two tests and an edit in here. And they all have different timestamps, and this is why it's actually working. So let's say we save test yet again. This will actually add a third test. And if we go into edit, we can do the same thing. We'll save it again. And we could actually, just FYI, you could actually obviously edit these pages. I'm not editing them just for the sake of simplicity. But you could also edit these pages and um, it would add to the database and everything would still work fine. Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you are going to work with SQLite, I would say uh, definitely download the DB browser. Um, you can get that from their web page. It's very handy. It's very nice. You don't have to guess what's inside your database. So you can actually look. Our code will, of course, be on GitHub. And it will be linked in the bottom of this video. If you like this video, please feel free to like it. Subscribe if you want to see more like this. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment. And if you hated this video, you know, you can dislike it if you want. Even scream obscenities at me in the comment section. I don't really care. Anyway guys, hope you have a good day.